Hey folks, welcome to the second episode of Rethinking Grading, where we will get into the question of what are we doing for 23-24. First of all, everything that you need is available uh, in the handbook. That's an important thing, so all the details are there. You can link to the language that will be in the handbook when you find this slide deck available on the website. It's important to keep in mind, too, that these changes were approved by both the handbook committee and the school committee. Now, there are four key changes for what will happen in the 23-24 school year. The first one is the grade scale will be different. The revision policy will be different. Late work will be handled differently. And viewing grades will be a different experience. Now, for the grade scale, the grade options are as follows. Exemplary, advanced, proficient, developing, unsatisfactory, or no credit. Now, what do those mean is a deeper question. For a quick correlation, think of GPA equivalents, and this is ultimately what those come down to. So an exemplary would be the equivalent of a 4.0, unsatisfactory would be the equivalent of a 1.0. Uh, how does it actually work? Um, what, do the, what does this actually mean on a day-to-day -day if, if your student has an assignment? Um, no credit means that it wasn't attempted. Unsatisfactory means that the student didn't accomplish enough of the task at an appropriate level. Unsatisfactory is the equivalent of failing. Developing means that the student accomplished most but not all of the task at an appropriate level, while proficient means that the student did accomplish the task at an appropriate level. Advanced means that the student accomplished the task somewhere between appropriate and exceptional, while exemplary means that the task was completed at an exceptional level. A real life example might be a little bit helpful for, for putting this all together. Um, laundry. If you do not even attempt to do laundry, that would be the equivalent of no credit. Let's say you wash the clothes, but you don't dry them or put them away. That would be unsatisfactory. It's missing more than one element of proficient. Developing, you wash and you dry the clothes, but you don't actually put them away. So that's developing. It's missing one element of proficient. Proficient would mean, however, that you wash the clothes, you dry them, you put them away, maybe with minor prompting, but you do everything that you're supposed to do. Advanced would mean that you independently wash, dry, and put away the clothes. Exemplary would be that you can show someone else how to wash, dry, and put away the clothes. Uh, another thing to keep in mind in terms of the grade scale, uh, it's helpful because it puts the focus on learning rather than on just earning points. Right? And think of this as something that will be closer to what students encounter after high school. Outside of high school, you very rarely get percentages anymore. Um, MCAS doesn't give percentages. The driving test doesn't give percentages. Teaching tests don't give percentages. And if you stop and think about it, it's an interesting question. Right? What does it mean to get a 72% on a haircut? What does it mean to get 72% on CPR? This new grade scale matches real life employer situations, right? And a lot of folks have said that this language is very similar to how they're evaluated at work. As far as the revision policy, students would meet with teachers to create a relearning plan. And this would happen if a student does an assessment, isn't happy with the grade, then meets with the teacher. Students then complete the relearning plan, and that could be as simple as meeting up during period nine. Uh, it might require doing a little bit of extra practice work, but students would complete that relearning plan. Students would then either complete a new assessment, retake the original assessment, or maybe retake portions of the original assessment. Importantly, students would earn the new grade rather than an average of the old and new grades. This is a more accurate reflection of what a student knows. 
For late work, for those of you that are familiar with how South Shore uh, looks at grading, assignments are generally understood to be either related to work habits or achievement. Achievement is something that measures skills and content knowledge. Work habits, however, measures other qualities like participation, effort, and professionalism. For next year, if a teacher assigns a penalty for late work, that penalty will be applied to work habits rather than achievement. This is more accurate. An exemplary essay should still be considered exemplary, even if it's in handed in two days late. The quality of the work, the skill level is exemplary and that's what the grade should be, but there does still need to be that consequence and that consequence would come out of work habits. In terms of viewing grades, students earn grades for power standards. These are department determined bundles of skills and knowledge that are derived from the state frameworks. These standards grades are then used to calculate a course grade, also known as the FO grade for those of you that are already familiar with our system. A special treat for those of you who are familiar with SST's grading portal it will no longer be the A1, W2, C1, M1. All of those columns will be gone. There will just be one overall course grade now. There will be a lot more training on this, what it will look like, how you can navigate, what screens and what sections of power school you need to go to. That will be offered in the very near future, that training. But for now, let's just take a look at a sample on the next slide. Now, this is not exactly what it will look like, but it's very close to what it will look like in power school next year. As you can see here, there's a, in bold, you have an over, you have a course name, and then to the right, you have an overall course grade. Underneath each of these, you have the power standards for English. And this is, this is not exactly what English will have, but it's, it's similar. Writing, reading, speaking, listening, language, and work habits. And they each get their own grade based off of the assessments. For writing assessments, the student earn advanced. For reading assessments, they earn proficient, and so on and so forth. Again, this isn't exactly what it will look like, but this will be a more helpful situation for students, for teachers, and for parents and caregivers to be able to identify how a student can improve, and specifically in what area a student can improve. It's important too to keep in mind what doesn't change. Students are still going to earn a GPA. On the back end of power school, each of these grades, these words correlate to a number for a GPA, and that will be used to calculate an overall GPA um, just as we do right now. There will still be honor roll, there will still be National Honor Society, there will still be a salutatorian and valedictorian that is not changing for the 23-24 school year. Accommodations and modifications on IEPs are still provided. This grading system has nothing to do with instruction. Eligibility for sports and extracurriculars is the same. Slight difference is instead of avoiding Fs, students now need to avoid unsatisfactory. Goals on future IEPs may be worded slightly differently. For example, you might student might be the goal might be to be proficient or to be developing. Um, rather than the language of eight out of 10 instances. Uh, but the IEPs are, continue, are going to continue to be focused on supporting student progress. The big takeaways, folks, grades, report cards, and power school will look different. I would suggest that they're going to be more fair, more accurate, and especially more helpful. The other thing to keep in mind is that really the important stuff with education, teaching, learning, positive relationships, that is all gonna stay the same. If you have questions, concerns, please reach out to me. Here is my email, here is my work number. I am, I am here to help answer any questions. This can seem like a big change, but please understand that we, we have done our research, we have done our due diligence. We've talked with colleges and employers, students, parents and caregivers, teachers. We've done a lot of work to get ready for this. And we're all here to make sure that we are helping kids with their plans for when they graduate, whether that's college, 
or whether that's work or anything else that they might want to do. We are here to help. and We believe that this is a system because it is more fair, more accurate and more helpful will help empower students to achieve everything they want to achieve.